Loney? The Loney? There yes. he is. Hey, what happened to your face? Yeah. Melanie has coronavirus. I do not. It's not a funny joke. Take your... <laughs> see, look. She's covering. Take it off. All it's right. Like ding dong. No, you can leave it on. I would, I would wear it too. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> How are well, you doing? Buddy. Doing good, man. Feeling good. Yeah. Uh, again, cold shower. I'll talk about it every time, but it, it works so I dang did. good. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd it go? You're so back you left? I know. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. All right, let me yeah. turn it let me turn us up here, make sure all our stuff is good to go. We're also going live on our Facebook feed, but it's just an extra thing for We'll see if it works. For our it's listeners a funny over there. experiment. You gotta quit hitting this table, brother. Yeah, so goodness. Okay. Let's get stuff set up. Um ready to rock and roll? I'm ready. Yep, we are ready. Okay, that's cool. All right. All right. So, you guys, welcome to Anatomy of Marriage Live. We got the awesome and uh, superfluous, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Dr. I'm D. Not talk too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dr. D, uh, Ramsey personality. What's up, John? How you doing, my buddy? What's happening? How are you guys? We're good. We're good. It's sunny out here in cold? Seattle. Hmm? Is it cold in Seattle? Not now, uh, not right now. It's it's like yeah. fifty or so, but it's sunny, so we're just living it up, you know. It's been like sn it was snowing a few week, like days ago, so it feels balmy in the, in the mid to high fifties. It feels amazing here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. Good. Um, what about there? How's the weather? What's what's up there? Beautiful. It's just, I mean, I don't know. It's just been stunning the last few weeks, so it's been good to get outside and just plant gardens and just be a human being it's been awesome yeah, Very nice. yeah how's the feeling in the franklin nashville area with everybody shut in and stuff is it still kind of eerie or is it uh yeah I mean, people are getting pretty trippy um and you know tennessee is i grew up in texas and so it's very much like starting to feel like the government's locking us inside like it's kind of the the revolution starting to get cranked up a little bit so really? um, they're they're like Weirdly, like, now you can, like, drive through and buy beer and plastic. I mean, they're just kind of taking the rules off. And so it's just gotten kind of wackadoodle do around here. But uh, we'll see, man. We're, having, we're loving life. We're having fun. Yeah. Weird. That's crazy. So yesterday, or maybe two days ago, our governor in Washington State declared school is canceled for the rest of the year. Yeah. Which... Oh. Here. See, we've been canceled for several weeks, and so we just... It's yeah. over here. While, yeah, yeah no, mean, like we're, no, they're not going back. They, this they year don't go at all. back until Next September. school year, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's the same as it is here. Oh, yeah. weird. Oh. I didn't know that. Ugh. Oh, yeah, man. Just doing, everyone's learning, like, they have online lessons. Yeah. Or, um, like, dropping bags of materials off at the front door kind of thing. So yeah. Everybody's crazy. figuring it out. Wow. That's crazy. Well, that's cool. All right. So uh, thanks for joining us again today. And uh, yeah. thank, thank you guys, listeners on Facebook and Instagram, for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about now is the time for strength, right? And uh, we all have our own kind of topics on that. And it's almost like the novelty, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but like the newness of like, oh, we're, we're homeschooling. We're kind of shut in. Okay, let's do this. It's almost like that feeling, you know, when the power goes out <laughs> and, you know, the first night is like, Ooh, we'll, you know, we'll uh, have, we'll camp out in the living room and it'll be cool, you know, but then on the second or third day, like everybody hates, is hating life and like this sucks. I think we're kind of getting to that point almost if, if we haven't already been there for a while. So the novelty of it is wearing off and it's like, okay, now is the time to be resilient, to really dig mm -hmm. deep to get some strength going. And for me, and for you too, as a psychologist, I'm looking at it in a different way. Like, oh, now some of the stuff that we haven't talked about, some of the things that we haven't looked at and haven't worked on for a while, that's rising to the surface. So what does that look like for us? And how is that having implications in our marriage, mm -hmm. in our own psyche kind of thing? Like, I'm super interested in that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now is the time for strength. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do you a solid and, and put you on the spot first to to talk to talk about your one point, <laughs> one of the two points I guess. My, 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 of, being, of being strong. Yeah. Um, I I I think 
for me, the, res- the strength part of this is, um, gosh, this is going to sound like, like we're in a vacation Bible school or something. The strength here for me is um, being real, real still and shutting my mouth. Um, and so I totally agree with you. Like I was talking to a, a group of, uh, I was just on a Zoom call yesterday with the big team meeting and there's... You know, Ramsey really kind of skews a lot of young rock star people that we get from Google and Apple and come here and want to change the world. And, uh, but a lot of them are single. A lot of them live here in a cool city of Nashville. And I asked them, like, how are y'all? And they said, man, all of our friends and community, like, when this thing was going down, we were like, we're going to learn Latin and Spanish, <laughs> learn how to dance. We're going to get all ripped and in shape. Yeah. And they're like, three weeks in, this is awful. <laughs> like, yeah. We've done Thing, but like snort gummy candy off the bathroom counter and like do no exercise like we're lonely and so yeah i think you nailed it this isn't fun anymore um and so for me as like a mental health guy i'm thinking back to like when i was i used to coach high school basketball and mm-hmm. the most the, the way i could torture my players was not to say hey we're gonna run 100 laps it was to say we're gonna run till i get tired watching you uh-huh. and not give them a total right yeah that was the worst because there was no end to it and so there's no we can all handle a lot when we know what we're gonna do Mm -hmm. um it's hard to know like we don't know when this is over and so i think for me my impulse is to go fight and grab and stall and there's nothing to solve or fight here it's to love my family and be present in my job so the strongest thing i can do right now is to shut my stupid mouth and just let let today be today and then get to tomorrow and get to the next day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like that that unseen enemy kind of thing. Like I would rather yeah. fight I would rather get in a fight with an opponent that I can see. Because I, yeah. I, I know their moves, I know what they might do, so I can counter with this. And that's a really interesting point. So my grandma is uh, was born in England, right? And she's ninety three and she still drives, she lives at home, all kinds of stuff. And I was talking to her and I was like, Grandma, I'm, I'm kind of lonely, right? She, and she, so she, this is a lady that was in England during World War II, right? So she literally dodged bombs. And she said, you know what? We could see those bombs. All we would do was take shelter. But this, you can't see. So I can't go to Walmart. I can't go to Costco. I can't go out. And I'm like super bored. And I, that got me to thinking like the importance of like seeing something. So how can we adapt and adjust to this new, you know, kind of air quotes enemy like th- that we can't see because that's going to bring up all kinds of anxieties and all kinds of stuff for us. So if we can name that and give it a name, like in the psychology world, like DSM-5 and all that stuff, we give diagnoses, right? Major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. If we give it a name, sometimes we can uh, externalize the problem and that's helpful. Now, if we take on that name, like, hey, I'm depressed. Oh, well, good to meet you, depressed. That's not a good thing, right? But at least we can get a handle on what's going on. So I, I really like that part of what you're saying there. I think it's, it can be really helpful, too. Mm-hmm. Naming the dragon's a big deal for me is make sure yeah, we can see it and we can point at it. And then we can have a strategy to deal with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, one of the things. So I got the idea for this episode and this live from, of course, Jocko Willink's book, the, uh, what is it? Discipline equals freedom, my mm-hmm. favorite. Um, and there's just this line in it where he says, now is the time for strength. And he was, he was meaning in battle. He was not meaning in what we're currently going through. But what it put in my mind was I wanted to like look at the definition of strength. I am a total word nerd. I love words. I love looking up the meaning of them. And sometimes I think it's helpful to have a reminder of what words actually mean, their definition. Mm-hmm. So some of the definitions of strength include the capacity of an object or substance to withstand great force or pressure, the emotional or mental qualities necessary in dealing with situations or events that are distressing or difficult. And I love that as strength, because when I think of strength, I think of like, a, like, oh, I'm a man, blah, look at me. Mm-hmm. But there's strength in mothering well. There's oh, strength yeah. in um, not ripping your kid's head off when you're mad at them. There's strength in just doing the dishes in a happy, positive way. <laughs> like there's strength in all of those things. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we think of strength as being really one dimensional or we don't think of it at all. So I wanted to kind of talk about that definition, but then... I think more importantly, I want to talk about what strength does not look like right now. Does that make sense? I'm going to throw that out to you both. Like, what does uh-huh. strength not look like right now? And I'll, some examples, again, are like when I am not being strong, 
in my being stuck at home, being with the kids, whatever, that usually looks like giving in, being mad, telling someone like either my spouse or my kids why I think they're wrong or why they've made my life harder, mm-hmm. right? That is it. Those are some examples of not being strong. Can y'all think of some too? I, I think for me as a dad, you might resonate with this, John. Uh, examples of not strength would be going into my own brain and kind of focusing too much on myself looking well Jocko Willink again talks about going um looking down and in instead of up and out so for me as my several responsibilities as a dad as a husband as a worker if I'm looking down and in then I can't see what's up and out oh what do my kids need all three of them what does Melanie need what do our listeners need in that way so I uh, not having strength would be looking down and in, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, the, looking down and in is important, and that would be a really good time, like, for, for me. I, I get up in the morning early and journal, so maybe that's a time of down and in. You know what? The kids are safe at sleep. Melly's doing her own thing. It's time for me to look down and in, so then I can look up and out in the rest yeah. of my day. So, looking down and in, that, that would be, a I guess, a warning sign mm-hmm. for me if I'm spending too much looking down and in. Mm-hmm. And that, one of my default settings that's not good, one of my learned behaviors is to detach and, uh, yeah, to get lonely, uh, to get by myself. And so that's, I think you're dead on. The, the, when I'm working with leaders of uh, businesses and when I'm working in crisis and trauma, one of the things I always tell folks is when you find yourself drawing lines between us and them, mm. that's when you know you're not well anymore. Uh, because you, you get, when you get tired and you get scared and then you get uncertain, then you start, I think uncertainty is kind of the root, but when you don't know, you start trying to circle up and see who's on my team and who's on the other teams. Yeah. And so if you think the statement right now, if they would just fill in the blank, I don't mm. care who the they is and who the fill in the blank is, the economics of this deal with all of these international economies intertwined in this thing and no medical professional can agree and all the modeling is doing different things. And so if you say the phrase, if they would just do this, just know you're wrong, and that's a sign that you're not doing well, right? That's a sign you're starting to not be strong. So for me, the strongest thing I can do is to not go down the rabbit holes, to not pontificate, to not run my mouth, and just be present. Mm. And that's so hard for me to do because I want to go solve it and talk a lot and point and be yeah. loud. And point yeah. and put it. But the, 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 the strongest thing to do now is to be gentle. Mm-hmm. Mm. That is awesome. Because I think therapists are not, you know, if we're thinking, oh, if they would just X, Y, Z, if they would just think like me, or or even more targeted, if she would just see my point of view, right? Or if he would just listen, X, Y, Z. So you're you're excluding and then putting like all the 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 rightness on your point of view, and you can be right about something, and somebody else can be wrong, but it's really easy to get caught up of like, oh, I'm always right and he's always wrong or this stuff. And just the amount of mental energy that that takes, like, oh, if the government would do this or if they would do this or this or that, how about this? You look, that's the time to look down and in and go, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing to, to solve this problem? What am I doing to contribute here for yeah. the good of it, right? Or well, like, what, what expertise? Like, I don't have, I'm not a, virologist, I'm not an epidemiologist, I don't know anything about economic, we, none of us know, right? And so we spend mm-hmm. so much energy, we're just wasting, wasting, wasting. I think the faster um, we can get to a grieving process, mm-hmm. right? So I'm thinking about this when I would go into a home and someone had lost a kid and they were wishing and they were wanting to get up and they were just fully limbic at this moment. When you could just drop your shoulders and start to grieve that the world we used to know is no more, Mm -hmm. and whatever this looks like tomorrow is going to be different, Mm -hmm. then we can start the grieving process and the ownership of that process, and then we can start having some minute say in what that might look like Mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. Um, But the longer we hold on to this and try to pretend that my husband hasn't passed away in the next room or that my wife still hasn't left me or whatever, and we can just start grieving this thing and just say, like, it just sucks. This is just not what we signed up for. It's not what we hoped 2020 was going to look like. It's hard. Yeah. And now we can get on feeling it and then moving on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. I've never thought about that, the 
like looking at this as a grieving process, and I'm thinking about the you know the four stages of grief with Elizabeth Kubler Ross. Um, you know what I'm talking about, like like denial, oh, yeah. grief, acceptance, and and all this stuff. Um, and uh, I think Kessler added a new one, and it's really remarkable about. Uh, uh, I think is it Kessler? Is that his name? The guy who wrote with her, he added another one for finding meaning in this. And so oh. um, I love what he talks about, like the you don't find meaning in the death like there is no meaning that you lost your kid or that your new business that you started just went away there's no meaning that the meaning is made in what you become afterwards the things that you do the community you develop as you grow out of this Mm -hmm. thing and so um it drives me bananas when someone's like i'm I'm finding gratitude in the tragedy no man the tragedy's terrible Mm -hmm. it's not good the gratitude is the people who circled you and the new skills you learned as you came out of this thing and who you became that's where you start finding gratitude mm-hmm. and and so i think yeah i think the faster we can get to a grieving process and you don't expedite grief grief looks different for everybody but, right um after we can just recognize this is just different now mm-hmm. um then we can start to begin that long healing process that we're all going to go through yeah oh, that's that, awesome that reminds me of another quote actually in the discipline equals freedom book where jocko willing talks about like death and loss and grieving it's it is it sucks there's nothing you can do about how much that stuff sucks but you can walk forward in a new way and i think of we lost several really important people i think about a year and a half ago to cancer like all at once just hugely important people in my life and i walked away from that going you know i can either be crushed by this Mm -hmm. or i can celebrate their life by moving forward and learning and doing good and and like mm. bringing the joy that they can no longer bring to this world and putting it forward into the world. And so I think of as weird as this transition might sound, like we're in a time that's so crazy and so different and I want to look 6 months, 6 years out and be like, "Man, we did that really well." Yeah. Like we didn't freak out. We weren't weak and afraid we weren't just like hiding and crying we were doing everything we could to do the best job and to make the most impact and to live the best life during something that was really challenging and one of the things that i heard in an interview actually it was on entree leadership with chris voss and he's the hostage negotiator guy you probably are friends with him or something but um (laughs) (laughs) you should be but um He was talking about uh, how positivity goes hand in hand with being strong. Like when you have a positive attitude and and he doesn't, he's not talking about like being happy or like loony or ignoring the things that are really important. But Mm -hmm. when you can be positive, you can actually behave in a way that is smarter. Your your brain power notches up a bunch. Oh, sorry. Um, And so the, the power of looking at this situation, knowing that it's hard. And going, you know what? I'm going to do my best. I'm going to be my strongest. I'm going to be positive about this. That's going to make your choices be wiser. Mm -hmm. That's going to make your household feel better. And it's going to make you happier six months, six years from now. When you look back and go, you know what? We did crush that. We did do that hard thing really well. And so that's kind of the the stuff that's been coming to my mind as, as we're walking through this. And people are going through really hard things. And now I'm a homeschool mom for the rest of the year. And all of these things. Right? Like, how can we go through this really well? But also know positivity and strength are literally intertwined. And I I had this, um, the same thing of like the definitions of stuff. No, you can't talk. He's hitting my knee. He wants to talk. I'm saying he can't talk. Um, One of the definitions of negativity is the expression of criticism or pessimism about something. And that is not strength. That is weakness. So when we Mm -hmm. come to these moments with negativity, we are literally like sucking the life and the ability to walk through this well Mm -hmm. with our negativity. And I just think it's, I don't know, I think it's important. What did you want to say? Well, no. (laughs) I wanted to give John a chance to talk is what I was saying. Oh. (laughs) Sorry. It it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from the famous psychologist Amos Tversky where he said, being a pessimist is, I'm paraphrasing, but being a pessimist is stupid because if it comes true, you've experienced it twice. Once when you worried about it and once when it happened. Yes. So you might well like, um, yeah, look for the, the light at the end of whatever tunnel you happen to be going through. And if you don't get out, you don't get out, right? It happens. But there's no reason. I, I actually think, um, Melanie, one of the things I think people struggle with when they're in the middle of grieving and they're in the middle of a crisis is remembering that strategic planning, planning a year from now is really a privilege that our modern world has because we've had some stability. We've had some certainty, some of it manufactured, some of it fake. Mm. And so this, for all of us now, we're trying to figure out what it looks like, uh, what certain, 
uncertainty looks like. And so um, this is kind of turning into a joke, but it's serious. This I just pulled this out of my back pocket. This is my new strategic plan, and it's for April 7th. Mm. And my job today is to, here's what I've got work-wise, and here's what I'm going to do personally, and I'm going to treat people with respect and dignity. And when I get to the end of today, because, dude, I don't know if Dave's going to have me stay tomorrow, right? And I don't know if radio is going to look like radio, and I don't know know what jobs are. I don't know. And so when I start going, pontificating and dreaming, the reality is I don't know. And so I can control today Mm -hmm. and a few things today, and I can really control it. I take care of people. And so... Um, this is like my lo-fi way of, I don't have a, uh, I put my calendar away, my planner away. Cause I, dude, I had a whole, whole like months of speaking engagements that are all gone mm. and plans for how we can, it's all gone. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to do today and then a stack of these in six months, I'm going to be able to thumb through them and say, here's the daily routines. Here's the daily things I did to make sure I was honoring people around me. And in six months from now, if that worked out for me, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That. That is the best thing I can think of. Like, actually, we were, we're, we right now, currently, April 7th, we are supposed to be in the air going to Nashville right now. Yes. To, we were supposed to, to. to speak at Ramsey Solutions, right? But all that got canceled because mm-hmm. of this, right? So, yeah, we had these great plans. Oh, we're going to speak at the Devo. We're going to, like, hang out with you in person. And we're going to do all this other stuff. Devo tomorrow, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You better Sucker. name it. <laughs> I know. Um, but we were, and other uh, speaking engagements, too, that we had at different churches and stuff, all that, poof, poof gone. So this is, this is giving me a real chance to think differently. Like, okay, two weeks from now, three, six months from now, what is it going to look like? So although I'm planning ahead, the most powerful thing that, that I think any of us can do, and our listeners, and hopefully this is the, the, the adding value part to all the people who are watching, the, the best and strongest thing you can do is control right now what you have in front of you, right? Because if, because what, it, literally, can you control what happened yesterday? No, it's done. Can you control what happens one hour from now or tomorrow? No, we can want to. Go ahead. And we're, we're seeing videos coming out of hospitals across the world. Where people are saying that they're in the same hospital and they're shooting different foot. I, I don't know anymore. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I know what my governor has told me would be the best thing for my community. And I got two little kids and a wife that loves me and I've got meaningful work to do. And it's really turning into this really remarkable recentering time for me because I sure walked around thinking I was a lot cooler than I was and a lot more in control of things than I am. Right. And like it's really limiting me. Um, in my heart and mind, the things that I can control, which is not very much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, the, I guess the, the, the power is in the now, you know? And I'm reading this right. guy, Eckhart Tolle. You probably heard of him, but he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's mm-hmm. like super, super deep, like kind of like blow your mind deep, you know? So, and I have to listen to him in spurts or I'll go crazy. But <laughs> he, he talks about the, the literal power of now. Like, we, we literally don't have yesterday, the memory of it is gone. I mean, the memory of it is there, but the actual thing is, is it's in the past and the future hasn't happened yet. So literally all we have right now is right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I kind of coined this saying that I really like that might be helpful for people. So right now, currently, we are creating our, our future memories, mm-hmm. right? So that kind of like, so that, that, that joins the past, present, and future but it focuses on the now. So right now, we are creating our future memories. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like in two minutes, oh yeah, we're talking yeah, to Deloney. Adventure. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Just, just the idea. So if people are struggling with anxiety or just not knowing, none of us know, mm-hmm. right? You are one of, of, you know, three and a half billion that don't know. But you're also <laughs> one, <laughs> you're one that uh, has the... the the very most singular power of controlling you right now, which is kind of cool. It's like a dichotomy, I guess, but mm-hmm. it's interesting. When you live with just the simple notion that depression is fear of the past and anxiety is fear of the future, it you can live in that gap and just breathe right in this little moment, right? And mm-hmm. you can kind of avoid the nonsense if you can continue to land yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, and even like a super practical way with that, because in my family, we've struggled with depression and anxiety. It's a thing that's there's we don't hide that. And um, the idea of like 
being present, that present moment awareness of right now, I'm doing okay and mm-hmm. I'm acting okay and I'm balancing myself. If I start to feel that anxiety, I'm gonna rein it back in. I'm gonna breathe it out. And like we have the ability to do that always in every moment when we're present and we can and we have the awareness to do those things. Mm-hmm. The one thing I did want to talk about, which this falls perfectly in line with, is what are examples of what strength looks like for people right now then? Like what does it look like for a dad, for a worker, for a mom, for a friend, for a parent? Mm-hmm. I want to talk about that and kind of uh, drop these ideas out in case people are struggling with, I don't know how to be strong right now. Mm-hmm. I just feel confused. So does that make sense? Yeah. What what things come to mind when we? You bet. I told a group of business leaders this morning the uh, who tend to be macho William Wallacey like let's just go take on the day right mm-hmm. um, is the strongest thing you can do for your family who is feeling this this tension from you this this fear this this I don't know what to do is to write down your feelings every day and to share them with your family mm-hmm. and that's the strongest. Think that's the most aggressive, strongest thing you can do right now is to be vulnerable with the folks that are closest to you. Because the, the, the truth is they know it. They can feel it on you. They can see it on you. They can smell it on you. So just sitting down. Oh, you are lost. We can't hear you. You froze. Let the we feed froze. come up. We froze. Hmm. That's all right. You back? She was feeling more nervous to... Uh, yeah, there you are. Yeah. Okay. Um, she was feeling nervous to tell me how she was feeling and all this because she thought I had all the answers. And so I was saying, no, dude, I'm making it up on these podcast things, man. Um, and so, but, but it was, we're having to continually be vulnerable with one another. And I think that's the strong thing you can do right now. I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. I, I think it goes back to what can we do right now today? Making a list like your card. I have a list that I journal out and uh, every single day there's there's a list of things that I do and those are things that I'm going to do no matter what. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, if I'm sick and dying and laying in bed, I'm not going to do those things, but everything else. And like one thing that uh, Melanie did a really good job this morning. So our daughter is turning eight this, this Friday, Friday, right? And she's upset because there's no birthday party going to happen. You're right. But Melanie said, you know what, sweetie, we're going to get grandma, we're going to get papa, and we're going to do something extra special. So our our little daughter was saying, you know, expressing her feelings around that. And then Mel, you were there to normalize this process and say, we hear you, we see you, we understand you, we're here for you. And uh, just just talking about it, you know, writing down your feelings and also talking about your feelings, Mm -hmm. especially our listeners who have kids. You better check in with your kids because sometimes kids don't present, mm. you know, they don't, they're not going to say it. It might manifest in some other way, but I want all of us as parents to be on the lookout for that so you can attend to and serve your kids mm-hmm. in a good way. And also same thing with your spouse mm-hmm. too. Um, I was just listening, like I said earlier, I was listening to the Chris Voss interview on Entree Leadership, and one of the things that he talks about as a hostage negotiator, he was talking about addressing the elephant in the room. He said oftentimes we don't want to address the elephant Mm -hmm. in the room because it's uncomfortable, we'll feel weird, so with this meaning the elephant in the room, like with a kid, he he would say something like, I know you're scared. Like you're addressing the thing that your kid is feeling Mm -hmm. um, in a way that really makes, because I did that with Hattie. It made her feel so much better. Our daughter was like, I'm not going to have a birthday. No one's going to come. We should cancel it. I don't want presents. She was really upset. Mm -hmm. She's turning eight and no one's going to be at her birthday party and she thinks she can't do it and she thinks the stores aren't open and we can't buy gifts. And so I said, you know what? I know you're worried about that. So actually addressing that fear is uh, can become a strength if we do that really well. And then another thing I want to say, a strength for uh, the, something that we do that is really sort of strength building. Every morning we do our marriage mornings mm-hmm. and we do a prayer together. We do what we're thankful for, like a gratitude about each other and our family. And then we do our intentions for that day. We say, okay, my intention as an individual it, within my marriage mm-hmm. is I intend on touching you more, being kinder to mm-hmm. you, saying thank you more. Or I intend on being more tidy. That that should be your list. I intend on <laughs> putting my shoes away. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, it actually is a, such a simple thing. Mm -hmm. We do it every single morning. It takes less than three minutes and it is hugely strengthening to our marriage, to how we feel and how we start our day. It sets Mm -hmm. the tone. I can, I've got this. It sets that tone for the rest of our day. Yeah. And I I really love that. I cut you off though. You were totally going to say something forever ago. No, I, I I love that. I, I, that brings me back to like, um, 
Yeah, I love that elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of calling it out, whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the hardest things when you're teaching someone how to do a suicide intervention is to look at somebody and say, are you going to hurt yourself? Mm-hmm. And it's so weird to say those words sometimes, but once, so often I think something's going to happen and they're like, no, what are you, you know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. it's all gone. Or they, yeah, and now we've got some real data that we can work with. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, you mentioned it before, Jocko is kind of the poster child for discipline, but the strongest thing I think I can do is just to keep doing the things that I know, right? Mm-hmm. Keep getting sleep and keep eating well and keep exercising and keep hugging my kids and my wife. And those are going to get boring and they're going to get old and I'm going to want something sexier or more glitter or more fireworks. But mm-hmm. the strongest thing is to just keep doing the little things that we know are going to plug us along. And then when the big things happen, whatever they may be, mm-hmm. um, I guess we're all getting checks in the mail now, which whatever the things are going to be, mm-hmm. um, then we will be in a place to hear them and absorb them. Then at that time, I think it's going to be such, that's what I'm looking forward to in this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. It's like that. The kind of is the same quote that you said, but um, progress or discipline is doing the same thing with consistency over and over again. So mm-hmm. if progress right now looks for, for our family, just by doing those tiny things, but the progress is, is like just maintaining baseline and, and providing a safe and stable uh, environment for my wife and kids. That's not sexy. That's not great, grandiose kind of thing. But you know what? That is the absolute most thing that is needed mm-hmm. for our mental health, for our relational health, and even spiritual health. Is like do the boring things over and over and you will see progress. It's kind of like a bank account or something like yeah, you know, I put $5 since I was three years old into a thing. Oh, it's so boring. $5, that's nothing. Oh, but guess what? Now I'm 20. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Exactly. So it's it, it's doing those same, same things over and over and being consistent in that, which is, I, I want everybody just to take a minute and think of that. Like, okay, what can I do today? And in the next six months, that's just the tiniest thing that will contribute to the overall picture. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's like a, when you're in an airplane, we've all been in airplanes, right? But that pilot checks his his course his navigation like i don't know every minute or something because it's it if it's off that much and you go an hour that much mm-hmm. guess what you're gonna you're gonna um uh end up in uh albuquerque yeah. ra- rather than uh <laughs> oklahoma or something you know because you're gonna go like that so constant I'd rather in albuquerque than oklahoma <laughs> yeah me too me too it's beautiful there i've been yeah. there um but uh that that constant course correction and right now it, it's all it's high time that all of us look at what we're doing look at where we're going and actually seeing what is what is lining up with what we want and what's actual reality yeah and i want to say really Mm -hmm. quickly too we need to celebrate when we are doing the right thing even if it's something little like i know that sounds so goofy but we do that with our kids all the time to be like hey we did the dishes by this time in the evening now we can watch a show how fun like Mm -hmm. celebrate Celebrate, celebrate, because fill your life with joy in mm-hmm. this tricky, weird, hard season. And when you are strong, even in the little things, just be happy about it. Celebrate it. Celebrate and, it. You know? I don't know. Uh, look, Do why, not, why not have joy, right? Why right? not have joy? We're going to get enough drama, and we're already getting enough bad news. Let's let's look for the the, the where the lights are in the darkness. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know. We don't need to be sad all the time. <laughs> um. So, okay, uh, we, we should wrap it up. What's up, Anthony, my man? Good to see you. Uh, we should wrap it up. Anything um, for people that want to find your stuff that are our listeners that don't know about you, tell them where to go. Um, at John Deloney, D-E-L-O-N-Y. We're starting the um, – I've been getting a lot of questions on, okay, cool, you're giving us all these fancy pants answers. Like, what are you actually doing? And so, actually, and this is just serendipitous, tomorrow uh, are kicking off the 30 Days of Wellness. So I'm just going to make a video of just – random things I'm doing every single day to give people a picture of this is the things I'm leaning on in this wacky world right now mm-hmm. that are keeping me and my family safe and well and whole. So um, if folks join us, hope we can get a whole crew of people that are going to commit to 30 days of just doing whatever, sitting in a bu- bucket of ice water outside yeah. your yard <laughs> or whatever it may be, right, um, that we can go forward and all be kind of well together as a little herd. Uh, oh, that's and awesome. Get our way through this. Time. Yeah, and that's John Deloney on Instagram or... Hey. Anywhere else, right? Wait, did you freeze? Did the feed Are freeze? Are you there? Um, yeah, I'm on the Facebooks and all, all that stuff. I don't really know all that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where you're at? I am here. 
Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Ramsey team, for chilling out with us. And hopefully we'll be able to come back next week and drop some more knowledge on y'all and uh, serve you in any way that we can. So, John, thank you, man. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Sullivan, man, and blessings to your, your gang. We're going to get through this. It's going to be awesome. Yes, awesome. sir. Well, All right, man. Have a good one. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. And then end that one. I think it's still on. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Share to story. What's up, Christina? What's up, Lily? All right, guys. We got to go. Bye. Bye.